Good afternoon, Wisconsin. How's it feel? How's it feel? All right. Chancellor Mnookin, faculty, staff, and administration, friends and relatives, members of the broader Wisconsin family, and most importantly, the class of 2023. I want to thank you all for the honor of celebrating with you today. Now, it is great to be back at Camp Randall. What a special, historic place. It's at the heart of my favorite Big Ten campus and my favorite state in the Midwest. Not as cold as Minnesota, not as flat as Illinois, and Michigan, well, forget Michigan. And so much better at football, men's basketball, women's ice hockey, women's volleyball. The list goes on and on and on. As the proud parent of a University of Wisconsin alumna class of 2019, I know a little about what you've been through to reach this moment. Long hours and late nights. Debates about everything under the sun, from politics to philosophy to religion to the most contentious question of them all. Spotted cow or moon man? <laughs> all right, spotted cow? <laughs> moon man? You've been through internships, externships, and study abroad programs spanning every continent except Antarctica. Though, of course, there's also an ice cube project that's opening a new window on Antarctica, which means that this university has not had just a global reach, but a physical presence on every continent for more than half a century. Or at least that was true, at least that was true until 2020, when COVID changed everything and turned your college experience upside down. Now, the year printed on your degree will forever set this class apart marking you as unique in the annals of school history. A cohort tested by plague, by protests, and by politics. Tested by a great deal more than exams, though I hear you also managed to squeeze a few of those in along the way. And while I'm sure there have been engaging lectures, thought-provoking class discussions, and favorite professors you'll remember fondly in the years to come, I know that right now that the pain of finals thesis writing and capstone projects may still be a little too painfully close. The good news is that as of this moment, all of that is behind you. Well, what? Well, wait a minute. Except for you JDs. The rest of us are heading to the KK after the ceremony. But you really need to start studying for the bar if you're going to be practicing outside of this state. So JDs, not quite yet. But class of 2023, my point is this. There are no students in this crowd today. You are now alumni of the University of Wisconsin. And, that means two things. One, it's time to celebrate. You worked hard. You've achieved something truly extraordinary. And we could not be prouder of you. But two, it also means that your time at this institution, one of the crown jewels of America's higher education system, is over. A significant chapter in your life is drawing to a close. Your future is upon you. And the stakes from this moment on are now much higher than the ones you faced here in Madison. And that is a good thing. Graduates, you don't need anyone to remind you about the challenges that we face in this moment, both as a nation and as a world. A climate in crisis, a planet riven by conflict, a country seemingly at war with itself over everything from gun control to reproductive control to control of our electoral system. You already know what the most urgent issues are because you're already leading the way, standing up for your most basic rights fighting for those who are more vulnerable, speaking out against hatred, racism, and bigotry, especially when it rears its head uncomfortably close to home. Now, as Chancellor Mnookin said, Wisconsin Badgers just don't sit on the sidelines. 
You're expected to be in the arena. You're expected to lead. It's just who you are. It's who you have been trained to be. So I can't wait to watch this class leave its mark in every field and make a difference on every continent. But whether you're about to start a career in accounting or agriculture, economics or engineering, whether you consider yourself liberal or conservative, Republican or Democrat, or none of the above, there is one urgent imperative that demands your attention right this second, overrides every other priority, and constitutes the defining issue of our time, the protection of our democracy itself. Our Our politics are seemingly paralyzed, dominated by special interests and too often the most extreme and outrageous voices. Our, our public discourse is infected with disinformation that's weaponized against fact, truth, and sensible solutions. Inequality and economic insecurity are real for too many and fuel massive upheaval. And all too often, the darkest undercurrents of our society make themselves known and take expression in destructive, zero-sum politics, and too often, too tragically, even violence. No wonder more and more people of all races and of all classes feel more alienated, powerless, and more distrustful by the day. No wonder millions fear that the system, and maybe the entire so-called global economy, is rigged against them. No wonder our society is turning inward and our nation seems bitterly divided. What this moment demands is something that's virtually unheard of, something that's virtually unheard of, even bordering on extinct in this political era. But graduates, it is also eminently within your power to create unity. National unity among the most difficult things to accomplish. Unity. We must absolutely be unified in our defense of the democracy that makes all other things in America possible. But, but here's the thing. Unity does not mean we need to agree about everything. Quite the opposite. And that was part of the message that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. brought to this very campus in 1965 when he visited the University of Wisconsin and spoke to a, a standing room only crowd of 3,000 students in the Stock Pavilion. He talked about the struggle for civil rights, the power of engagement, the righteousness of peaceful protest. And just after leaving campus, he reminded a reporter that, and I quote, we're at a terrible stage when we confuse dissent with disloyalty and we view every protester as a traitor, unquote. You know, after all, this country was founded on dissent and forged through revolution, born of competing and contradictory visions of how America would govern itself, what we would stand for, and who we, who we as a people might aspire to become. We've always been a loud, boisterous, argumentative nation, and we always will be. That's uniquely American. That's a good thing. That's an attribute, not a deficiency. American democracy at its best provides a process by which we can surface our disagreements and hopefully come to constructive solutions. But democracies, including ours, are inherently fragile. Just because our system has worked in the past is no guarantee that it will in the future. And you don't need to look far to see the scars and the reminders of what can happen when democracy breaks down. Authoritarian regimes rose in Europe in the early 20th century, not because fascism was strong, but because the defense of democracy was weak. A century before Dr. King visited campus, the site where this stadium now stands was occupied by Camp Randall, a Union Army training installation during the Civil War. And for millennia before that, this was the ancestral, ancestral land of the Ho-Chunk people. A striking reminder that even here, in this place of academic and athletic achievement, even now, on this day of celebration, we are in close communion with our history. It's real. It's tangible. It's right beneath our feet. You know, Dr. King's office often quoted as saying that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And that's true. 
but only because throughout our history, every generation of Americans, from the battlefield of Gettysburg to the beaches of Normandy, from Selma to Montgomery to a tavern named Stonewall, every generation has been called to put their hands on that ark and to pull it toward justice, to protect, to renew, and to expand our democracy, and to strengthen our capacity for self-determination every generation, and no American generation has failed. Now, class of 2023, it's your turn. That arc will not bend unless you pull it, little by little, day after day, year after year, with determination and with commitment. So when you hear people fan the flames of xenophobia for their own cynical self-interest, you have a responsibility to demand better to speak out for civility, tolerance, and understanding, especially among those with whom you happen to disagree. When inequality touches your communities, widening economic and racial divisions and fueling instability, you, the women and men superbly trained at this institution, must respond with solutions that make America more fair and more just. You are capable of this. When elected officials try to change the rules, and distort democracy by restricting who can vote, who can speak out. Even those voices can be, whose voices can be heard on the floor of a legislature, you must be vehement in your opposition because such actions dishonor those who have marched and organized and sacrificed and suffered and died for the most fundamental of American rights. Make no mistake, no matter your beliefs or your political affiliation, everyone here owes prior generations, from the founders to the abolitionists to the suffragettes to the women and men who gave their lives on foreign shores and domestic sites so that we might be more free and more fair. We all owe that debt that must be repaid by dedicating ourselves to the defense of a system that has made America, even if not perfect, truly exceptional. And when fear... And when fear and division threaten to turn us away from one another and our nation away from the greater world, you must remind us all of that fundamental truth that animates every democratic society and makes this campus such a wonderful and welcoming place. The notion that we are stronger, in the words of historian John Meacham, the wider we open our arms. As I look around this crowd of excited, energetic, and yes, a few, <laughs> slightly hungover faces. <laughs> I see, I understand, I was there. I'm not just optimistic about where the class of 2023 will lead us. I'm inspired, I'm invigorated, I'm filled with confidence, and I'm filled with optimism. Dr. King didn't come to the University of Wisconsin nearly 60 years ago at the, at the height of the Civil Rights Movement to ask your predecessors merely to speculate about the future. He came here because he had the opportunity, they had the opportunity and the responsibility to shape it. And that's why I'm here today, to ask you to shape not only your future, but the nation's. Graduates, that opportunity, that responsibility, that breathtaking power now passes to you. I want all of you to do well, but I also want each and every one of you to do good. How will you use your newfound power as graduates? What will the class of 2023 contribute to this university's proud legacy? What will you dream and then do that early generations could scarcely imagine? Extraordinary and difficult times produce extraordinary and accomplished leaders. The fact that you are now graduating into this crucible with a degree from the University of Wisconsin means you're right where you belong and right where we need your energy, your ideas, and your leadership the most. You are the leaders that we need. So I look forward to all that you will do and achieve from this moment on. 
our nation, our world is counting on you. I am counting on you. I have great faith in each and every one of you. So congratulations once again. Best of luck. Now go out there and change the world.